trying to do here, so I'm trying to kind of give you a basic guide uh, to get out into the wild and to be able to start to experiment for yourself. So the major thing to start with, of course, is safety. Okay, yeah, there are a few plants out there and they will kill you. Um, they're also quite good medicines, some of them as well. But any, um, uh, So the main thing is, if you know your plant families, then you can start to learn quite quickly. If you see a plant and you know immediately it's in, say, the car carrot fa 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 family, then you're going to know where to find it in the fl flower guide. And also, if you know something about each family, you know that, for instance, with the carrot family, there might be poisonous plants, so you have to be careful. Some families, like the mint family, you're generally going to be okay. In fact, I don't know a poisonous plant in, in the, the mint family. Um, I'll try and bring in a bit of food as well, so there are certain families which, which are good for food. Um, and I'm going to try and bring in taste as well. So the idea is, is that rather than just going to books and going, oh yeah, that herb's good for uh, that, if we can actually learn to taste things and to look at the plant and to use our senses to get to know the plant, then we can um, maybe begin to experiment ourselves. But of course, it's quite good if you're going to taste plants to know if they're going to be poisonous or not. Um, so, yeah, so... Um, Yeah, so the five tastes. This is a kind of traditional Chinese thing. Um, so the pungent taste, uh, we all know that with ginger, uh, ch chilli, uh, but we'd also put pungency with things like rosemary, thyme, so the kind of aromatic things. So herbs with an aromatic taste, uh, with a hot taste. I also put in herbs that are kind of prickly, so the prickly taste that will kind of kind of diffuse through the system so ginger would be count, count, counted there and there's also an American herb named pukeweed which is quite an interesting <laughs> one it you 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 can literally feel it crawling down your throat it's quite a strange one um, and then there's the sour taste uh, which generally cools so a lot of the sour herbs are kind of antihistamine they bring down kind of kind of inflammation um, uh, and kind of hyperimmunity. Um, astringency is an interesting one. So a lot of the dried, the herbs that we find in the wild, they have that kind of drying taste, if you know. So that's usually called, caused by things called ta tannins. Um, and so the word tannins, I think it comes because they were used to tan. So when you're tanning le le leather, you're kind of um, con c c s sort of uh, creating the integrity of the surface. So they do do the same with the digestive sy sy system and the lungs. They help to bind the the t t tissues a little bit. Um, yeah, so that's drying. And then sweet taste uh, is generally nutritive. It can be cooling as well. Um, and so I put that for the kind of moistening herbs, which are nutritive, and they help to kind of re restore us. A lot of the adaptogenic herbs that we use to kind of re restore ourselves from stress are, are sweet. So things like ginseng, uh, Chinese foxglove, uh, have 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 that nice sweet 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 taste, uh, and then of course there's the uh, 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 bitter taste, which is cleansing. So with the bitter taste, it has a reflex upon the gut, which has the effect of actually releasing bile. So when you're releasing bile, that's the major route of elimination out of the liver. So it's quite cleansing on the liver. And then it has a general m moving effect on the whole of the di di <coughs> digestive sy system as well. Um, so with the bitter herbs, we talk about kind of blood 
cleansers, so they're quite often good for uh, skin, 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 skin conditions. Um, and then there is a kind of uh, sixth taste, which, which is the acrid taste, which, are which is kind of a bitter taste, which is really intense. And those are the ve ve very relaxing herbs. So has anyone had a vervain tea, for example? Pretty, pretty intense flavour, but it does the job. So very good for kind of tension. Um, and there are quite a lot of herbs with that similar kind of thing. Um, so uh, this little schema here comes from somebody called Matthew Wood. Um, and he's kind of developed his own sort of Western herbal kind of energetics um, and so he talks about the six tissue states so heat uh, which is kind of inflammation um, and so generally the sour herbs are gonna help 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 with that um, dock would be a good example of a sour herb for, for, for uh, heat uh, cold is gonna be dealt well he helped with by uh, with the kind of pungent herbs so when we're looking at sepsis uh, low function of the system in ge ge general uh, coldness blue 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 cut 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 colors in the skin um, yeah that then we're going to go to the aromatic herbs um, dry, dry dryness is when there's a kind of uh, weight loss, um, weakness, and generally a low function of any particular part. Um, so we're going to help that with the sweet herbs. But also with the restorative herbs, we, we, we might talk about meaty or uh, salt, 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 salty herbs as well. So um, nettle is a very good example there. It's very full of iron, vitamin C, and so it's so, so forth. So it's a really good herb to help to re, re, rebuild. Um, and then a lot of the, the uh, sweet herbs are very good for the blood. Um, and then damp is when there's a uh, free flow between the tissues. Um, sweating, diarrhea, flu, flu, fluid loss. And of course we deal with that with the astringent herbs. Um, stagnation is toxicity, so uh, skin conditions can quite often show it. Um, quite often on the tongue there will be a kind of brownish coating um, and that, that will be re related to uh, the kind of build up of wastes and they're not kind of flowing out. Um, so, and then of course ME and stu stuff like that. Um, are connected to it. So we quite often with that, uh, you might think that we need a, a, a re, 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 restorative herb, but in fact we, we need to cleanse the, the system first. Um, and then wind is for, for the re, 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 relaxing herbs. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of a basic scheme and I kind of present that so that when you get outside, you can actually experiment and go, OK, so maybe, you know. Um, of course, you also want to look at the form of the plant, the colours of the plant, the smell of the plants as well. Um, although all of that is another talk entirely, I think. Um, so I'm going to go through a few plant families. Um, uh, so there are, there are there's about five or six major plant families which, which you'll, you'll, you'll meet um, uh, and that will deal with a lot of the herbs that you will find. Okay? So the rose family is a nice one to start with. Um, the subtitle here, uh, 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 mod, 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 Moderation in the Midst of, of pl Plenty, um, that kind of sums up something I've been trying to work out about the rose family for quite a long time. So quite often when you go to a 
kind of wild herb book, they quite often just say, oh, it's astringent. And they say that about a lot of the rose herbs, <coughs> and I've always felt there's a little bit more going on. And of course, the rose family is our major family for fruits. So apples, plums, pears, cherries, uh, almonds, peaches, so on and so, 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 so forth. So it's a majorly fruiting family. And it seems that the larger the plants get, the more they will make fruit. So we have kind of strawberries uh, do make fruit, but most of the herby plants in the rose family, they, they tend not to bear, bear fruit. Um, and then the trees, of course, tend, 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 tend to bear, bear fruits. Um, so yeah, there is this kind of astringency going on. So a lot of the herbs that we'll, we'll, we'll fi find in the wild. So tormentil, very common herb up on the moors. Uh, it's a bit strange for the rose family. It's got a four pe petaled flower. And the rose family, it generally it comes in fives. So if you uh, look in the cork, cork Core, core of an apple, you'll see that it's got five, five parts to it. Um, uh, yeah, so tormentil is a very good astringent, actually. Um, very good for diarrhoea. <coughs> um, silverweed, again, it's astringent. And the thing with astringency is they say that um, it's something you don't want to use too much if you someone who's prone to lose weight. So what, what it does is it tends to have the effect of lowering the kind of absorption of food. Um, but silverweed, interestingly, is an ancient starvation food. So the redness in the root, the, the uh, root was used uh, as a food. And you would have thought with the astringency it wouldn't really work, but it does seem to. And again, I, I like to think that there's this redness that comes in, which is almost like a sign for sort of blood. Um, and so you get this very, very, very red root. Uh, Sankfoil is similar. Me Meadowsweet is a very interesting plant, which grows in sort of marshes and along ponds. Um, that's actually slightly different. It, it's, it, it's quite cooling. Uh, it's quite good for pain, uh, very, very good for um, heart, heartburn. Um, and then you get your sweet herbs, so um, the raspberries and the fruits and, and, and uh, stuff. Um, yeah, so I'm putting in the raspberry. Again, what I'm trying to bring out is there's this kind of astringency, but it kind of it holds on to a nutritive side of the uh, plant. So um, raspberry is quite often used for reproductive issues. Um, so also is a late, 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 ladies mantle. So ladies mantle, if you know it, is the one with the leaves, sort of hairy leaves, and it holds on to the dew drops. Um, and it's almost like the dew drop is a sign for the way that it holds the liquid into place and that's kind of what I'm trying to get into with the rose family the way it's kind of got this nutritive fruiting side but this ability to kind of form it um, and that really is the essence of the rose it's this kind of um, beauty but beauty held together by form um, yeah so um, Probably can't get into that too deeply when I've got six more plant, 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 plant fa families to get through. Um, and then, of course, there's the sour taste. So cooling herbs, cherry is very good um, uh, for kind of hyperimmune. And it's quite often it's used when, when you've got that kind of dry cough, which is a kind of... Um, it's a kind of... Uh, um, it's a kind of... Ir kind of irritation of the mucosal uh, parts of the lungs. So what the cher cherry's doing is it's kind of soothing. <coughs> so it will stop that kind of cough that you do when you're <coughs> but there isn't actually anything there. Um, they, they actually say with cherry that you should be careful with it because you shouldn't use it 
when there might be phlegm to, to, to actually bring out. But in my experience, it doesn't actually stop uh, the coughing reflex. It just soothes the kind of irritation that makes you start to cough when there isn't some, 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 something there. There was a grimony as well, which is an interesting plant. Um, again, in the herb books, they just say astringent, but it's actually a bit more than that. It's actually a uh, re 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 relaxant as well. So it's actually quite good for tension. And that feeds in quite well with the bark flower picture, which is uh, people that hide behind a happy face. So they might have things going wrong, but they make, 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 make a happy front. Um, so here's just a few pictures of some of the things you might find. I, I actually haven't spoken about haw, haw, hawthorn at all, uh, which of course is very good for the heart, very good for high blood, blood, blood pressure. Um, hasn't come out very clearly, but you can see uh, the late lady's mantle with, with the dew drops. Uh, next there to the right is the me meadow sweet, and then there's the four pe petaled uh, tor 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 tormentil, uh, and then there, there's the sil silver weed. And it's quite nice just to see with the che cherries uh, that particular type of bark is something that you, you can always spot. Um, it's meant to be Pruna serotina, which is used uh, for coughs, but I have actually found any che 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 cherry bark will do. Um, and this is uh, another woodland herb. Again, it's kind of an astringent uh, get, get, uh, 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 ge geum, uh, um, it's called. Um, so that's kind of an introduction to the rose family. Uh, there are probably quite a few herbs which I haven't uh, met, met, men, mentioned, but uh, a lot of those herbs you, 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 you will see a lot. Um, so the mint family. Um, so the kind of herbs we know well of the mint family are, are, the, are, the, are, the, are, the, are the are the are the aromatic herbs. So the Mediterranean ones. So thyme. Hyssop, rosemary, mint, uh, le le lemon balm, balm too. Um, uh, yeah, so they they are basically they're warming. They're really good for the di 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 digestive sy 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 system, um, stimulating. Um, rosemary is very good um, if you're trying to get off the ca caffeine. It's a great tea to have in sort of at the start, start of the day. Um, uh, it's also meant to be a bit of an adrenal kind of a support. Um, but at the same time, you shouldn't use it late, late at night because it can stop, stop sleep. Um, and then, of course, you get the kind of acrid herbs. Uh, so motherwort is something that you see in the wild flower books i've never actually see, seen it grow, growing wild um, but it's got this intensely kind of a bitter fla flavor um, but very relaxing and it's also used for ch childbirth um, and actually it can be used during the first few weeks kind of afterwards. It's, it kind of helps with milk flow and it helps everyone keep calm. Um, uh, <coughs> gypsy wort, you sometimes see it growing on the canal sides. Um, similar to motherwort in a way, um, like motherwort and le le lemon balm, it's, it's used for hypothyroid. Thi um, so generally relaxing her, 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 herbs there. Um, skull cap, um, usually we use the mad dog skull cap, which is from the States, uh, but we have got a na native skull, skull cap, which is meant to work, work in the sa same, sa same way. Uh, bugle is quite a nice herb that you'll see grow, grow, growing wild a bit. Um, 
Yeah, so nice relaxing herbs. There's quite a lot of ner ner nervine her her herbs there, good for anxiety and stuff like that. Uh, le lemon balm as well, actually, is a very kind of nice cooling herb as well. Um, and then as you get, as you begin to meet members of the mint family in this country, you'll find you meet these astringent herbs. So things like the wound words. Uh, they've got a very strange kind of a smell to them, but they are, are me meant to be amazing for wounds. Uh, Self-heal as well is a wound herb. Uh, dead net nettle is a very good astringency for sort of mu mucous me me membrane health. Um, and the archangels as well. Um, yeah, so no poisons, no trees, lots of her her herbs to cook with. Uh, lots of medicines, but not really any food as well. So it's all stuff that you might put into your food in small amounts, but you're not going to eat a lot of it. Um, next slide. Oh yeah, and there are some nice expectorants in there for the lungs. Uh, black whorehounds, you sometimes see grow, grow, growing around. Um, uh, black whorehound is the bottom herb in the middle. Um, uh, ground ivy is the herb on the right there, which is very co common. You find that in woodlands and sort of it kind of sprawls along the ground, kind of under hedge, hedge, hedge rows. Uh, and there's the white de de dead nettle. Um, and at the top there is a uh, white whorehound. Whore, whore um, extremely bitter actually, but um, so, so, so they work on the stomach a lot, but they seem to have a very good effect on the lungs. Um, interestingly, because of the va va vagus nerve, a lot of herbs that work on the stomach work on the lungs as well. Uh, there's kind of a connection there. Um, and then just a few more examples here. Um, actually quite a, that is uh, the wound wort, there is the native skull cat, there's uh, a, a hi hyssop, uh, lo lo lovely blue, blue flowers, uh, stachys on the top right, um, nice herb for people, um, uh, stomach complaints that are caused by anxiety. Um, and there's a herbalist actually, he talks about the way that it seems to be people that have lost the integrity of their self through kind of tra 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 trauma. Um, and that seems to get in and sort of affect the, 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 the uh, guts. Um, in the middle on the top is um, wood sage, which again is a nice astringent herb and you'll see that grow, grow, grow growing around a lot um, and actually I can't <laughs> tell what the herb on the top left is. Um, I think it's Archangel actually isn't it? Yeah uh, but it's quite hard, hard, hard to see. So there in a nutshell is the mint family. Um, so a few different things kind of going on there. Um, but in terms of the ones that you're actually going to meet, meet in the wild, it's going to be the kind of astringents um, and some of the re 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 relaxing herbs as well. Um, so the daisy family, a uh, massive family. There are about 20,000 species in it. Um, quite hard to kind of pinpoint or to bring out any particular themes. There are a few themes. Um, I've kind of tried to bring out some of the basic forms that, 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 that you see. So there's the kind of th thistly herbs. Um, so mil milk th thistle is a well-known herb, very, very good herb for the liver. Um, holy th thistle is very much the same, but very intense in taste. Um, and then, of course, we can use, there are a couple of natives, which is the carline thistle and the, uh, the, the 
cotton one as well. Uh, and then, of course, there's bur burdock as well. Uh, very good uh, blood cl 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 cleansing herb. Um, uh, and then there's the daisy light flowers, so chamomile, uh, daisies, of course, ragwort, ox eyes. Um, and then the dandelion light flowers. So there's quite a lot of foods in there, actually. There's quite a lot of herbs there that you can pick. Uh, for kind of what wild leaves, fairly bitter, not not that nice. You probably want to be quite careful in the amount that 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 you put in, uh, but good for you as well, I think. Uh, so we got the cat's ears and the hawk's bits and the hawk's beards. There's actually a load of different herbs there, and it's quite hard to kind of tell tell them apart. Um, and then we've got the Artemisias, so wormwood. Um, um, my brain's gone blank. Uh, mugwort. Um, so mu mugwort, you'll you'll see grow growing around a lot. And then there's the tanacetum, so tansy, uh, fe fever few. Um, and then we've got a few foods, so lettuce, uh, ch ch chicory. Um, and sa 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 salsify. Um, salsify is meant to have the ability to regulate blo blood sugar, actually. Um, and it's quite easily gro grown as a vegetable. Uh, you, you can eat the young shoots and then the, the uh, root, roots can, can, can be steamed too. Um, so that's kind of uh, the basic forms that you'll, you'll see. Um, of course, the thing with the daisy family is its old name is the composite fa family. So what you're getting with the daisy family is like that. We might think of that as one flower, but it's not actually one flower. It's loads of little flowers in one head. So every little bit inside there is actually one flower. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, so that's why it's known as the composite fa family. It's a composite flower. Um, uh, so medicinal actions. So of course we've got lots of li liver herbs. We've got milk, milk thistle, dandelion, chi chicory. Uh, artichoke is a very good herb. It's very, very, very good for the liver. Um, by being good for the liver, it a actually helps deal with uh, blood uh, c cholesterol as well, um, and burdock as well. We've got some nice expectorant herbs uh, for coughs, so we've got e elecampane. Uh, again, I think I've seen that growing in the wild once, but I wasn't sure if that was maybe an escape. Um, it's a lovely plant actually, it grows about that tall. It's got families which are like, um, I mean flowers which are like a su sunflower. Um, and when you dig the root, you get this lovely starchy root with this incredibly strong smell to it. So it's kind of mixing up. It's the, the starch is kind of a restorative action there with a bitter action. And then there's a kind of aromatic as well. Um, so they, they, they can actually make an essential oil from, 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 from it. Uh, then there's colt's foot, which is quite a strange uh, plant because it, it flowers early on in the spring and then its leaves come up after the fla flowers have died. Um, uh, there is a toxicity there actually with the, the next herb, wh which is also no known as pe 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 petasites. Uh, both good cough, cough herbs, but uh, there does... There, there is an alkaloid in there which um, is thought to be harmful on the liver and there's lots of debate over how harmful it actually is and some people don't like to use them at all. Um, personally, I think it's fine if you use them for small amounts of time and not, 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 not a lot, lot, large dose. Um, and we've got a few relaxant herbs, so uh, chamomile, and then what wild lettuce is uh, um, 
uh, is yeast for kids. And again, we get that kind of acrid taste, that very intense kind of a bitter taste. And we find that it's extremely good for sleep um, and was used for kids to keep them calm. Um, uh, and the aromatic herbs, again, so the Artemisias have a certain amount of an aromatic side to them. Uh, yarrow as well, ca chamomile, uh, ta tansy. There's a special type of an aromatic there, which is known as a sesquiterpene, which sounds very cle clever, but uh, it basically means an, a molecule with 15 carbons or something. Um, what they have the effect of doing is you get a kind of aromatic side with a bitter effect. Um, and that's quite nice uh, to use for people that maybe need the stimulation of the aromatics. Um, uh, and it, yeah, it will kind of combine a relaxing side to the cleansing side as well. Um, and then we've got some nice externals. So everybody probably knows of our, 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 our Arnica. Um, Many people don't know that a daisy can be used in a lot of ca cases instead. So we're buying this very rare herb in from the, the Alps and we've got the daisies growing all around the place and we forget about them. So you can make an infused oil out, out, out of them and it's very, very, very good for bru bruises. Um, and then we've got a lot of ed edible herbs, so dandelion, Sat, sal, sat, sal th th thistle. Uh, a lot of the thistles can be eaten as well if you can be bothered to take all the spikes off. I, I did try it once, it took an awful long time for <laughs> not a lot of uh, <laughs> food in the end of it. Um, I, mean it is being, I mean it is worth being aware with wild herbs that if you compare the nutrient contents to the stuff we buy, it's far, far higher. Um, so just to add a small amount of wild stuff to your food is probably going to bring in a lot of extra things. Um, and then we've got low level toxicity. So ragworts um, have got a bit of a bad press, actually. Um, you can make an infused oil. Here am I saying it's poisonous. Um, you, you can make an infused oil out of it uh, for external use for, for uh, back pain, actually. Um, groundsel as well, and cults for not so sure about. Um, uh, anything else to say there? I think probably better move, move swiftly on. Um, Oh yeah, the, what, what, what I was meant to going to say, so the, the starch which you get in the Ella, Ella campaign, which I think is the same one in the Salsify, is in dandelion as well and it does turn up quite a lot. And so dandelion as well is meant to help with uh, blood, blood sh sh sugar. Um, uh, and of course dandelion is very good as a diuretic herb hence its French, fr French name, Pisson Lee. Um, and then, yeah, there's a few other herbs in there. So goldenrod I use as a liver herb, actually. Um, sneezewort on the top right there. It looks a little bit like y yarrow, actually. Um, and it is a actually related to it. And again, you, you can see how, how the flower is made up of these tiny little flowers. Um, that's got kind of a diffusive taste actually, you taste it and I don't know if whenever you were, were a kid when with the square ki kind of a battery you'd lick them sometimes, did you ever do that as a kid? It's got a very similar thing going on, it's like a kind of electric taste. Um, <laughs> And there is actually, there is um, a Asteraceae from America, which is known as electric da daisy. And it has this amazing kind of stimulating thing. Uh, very good for to to toothaches. Um, sneeze work, yeah, yeah.
Yeah. Uh, you see it growing on the moors kind of in Devon quite a lot. I've see, seen it a lot around, around there. So um, that is the Canadian goldenrod, which you quite often see growing in the gardens. And it actually ha ha has, has, has some escaped a lot. So you quite often on kind of ra ra railway banks, it's there. Um, and that is the native gold, goldenrod as well. It does actually, it has a bit of that electric taste as well. Um, very good astringent for, for, the, for, the, for, 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 for the lungs as well. Um, of course, uh, a herb that we all know about is uh, ech ech echinacea. Um, so that's an American herb, co cone flower. Uh, great one to ha have in the garden because it flowers for a long time. Um, and then at the bottom right, we've got Eupatorium cannabinum, um, which is um, named after hemp actually because the leaves are vaguely like hemp. It is, it, there are rumours of it being thought to be the English ki ki kind of an echinacea. And I have read in folklore stuff about it being used for sepsis. Um, apparently a man in Cornwall in the 18th century sa saved himself for, for, from ha having to have his arm cu cut off. Um, there are some quite nice herbs from the States which are related to it. So bone set is a really good herb for bone aching fe fe fever, uh, but also it helps to set bones. And there's a lovely herb, gra 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 gravel root or joe pie weed, which is a very nice herb for the kidneys. A um, few more pictures here. So yarrow in the bottom left and ch chicory uh, in the top left and um, uh, mugwort, which is well, well known as the dream herb, uh, tansy in the top right and that's ragwort um, at the uh, 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 arm at the lower right um, so moving swiftly on how long have we got is there a time five, five minutes right okay <laughs> um, okay i'm going to run through the carrot family really quickly because it's quite important um, so the carrot family of course it gives us carrots and parsnips um, and quite a lot of sp spices like um, uh, fennel and dill, um, medicines like uh, angelica, uh, wild, se 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 wild se celery, um, and then of course we got the poisons. So we got our hemlock, uh, dropworts, uh, fool's parsley, fool's fool's wa watercress as well. Um, all herbs you've got to be quite careful of because if you pick them and think they're going to make a nice sa salad, uh, it will be your last. Um, uh, but there are a few wild foods like cow parsley, chervil. Hogweed has got a bad name because people tend to mix it up with the giant ho hog hogweed, which if you touch it, it can ca cause a rash. Uh, but the normal hogweed um, uh, um, can be eaten. I've never actually tried it myself. Um, uh, yeah, so get a wild flower book uh, for that one. Um, uh, actually, uh, the picture there is the giant ho hogweed. Um, it is poisonous, but it is an amazing plant. It grows about 10 foot tall or more and has got these absolutely huge leaves. Um, uh, and here just a few examples so Angelica growing outside side my shed in the top left um, uh, in the middle on the top I, that um, yeah that I think was the hemlock leaves god, god I say I think I mean it's a bit hard to uh, see what, once you know them then, then you can see it, but it's quite hard, hard, hard in the picture. Uh, the main thing with the hemlock is uh, at the bottom there, there's that purpley blotched stem. So that's the major sign. Um, 
and Queen Anne's lace uh, at the bottom left, so known as Queen Anne's lace because uh, the red little flower in the middle is where she had her head chopped off and the rest of it is a rough. Um, so that's actually a wild ca carrot. Um, has been used for contraception, not always successfully. <laughs> um, uh, the brassica family, um, really good for wild foods. It's a cruciferi because it has that cross-shaped flower. Um, generally made up with the sulfurous compounds, which is where you get the hot kind of mustardy taste. So the, med the, the medicine action is circulatory stimulant. Um, and it's also quite good for the gut as well. Um, nice wild, wild foods there, sea, cabbage, uh, cress, um, and uh, the garlic mustard. Um, scurvy grass is a nice one as well. It doesn't taste uh, that great. At the bottom left, of course, is ho ho horse rat, 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 radish, uh, which is nice to eat and nice as an external as well for kind of pain. Um, so I'm going to quickly just run through a few other families. Uh, so the beet family, uh, all the spinach family, fat hens uh, is a common weed and you can eat that. It's fairly high in ki ki kind of oxalates which can be quite harsh on the, ki or on the ki ki kidneys. Um, but if you steam them well and don't eat them every day, uh, it's fine. Uh, and then good, good, good King Hen Henry, and of course the glasswort. So sa sa samphire is a is a, is a well well known herb. And then uh, carlaloo is a popular herb um, used for the leaves. Um, and then the dock family. Uh, so the dock family is the home to uh, buck buckwheat um, and of course we're talking quite sour herbs, they're good to clear heat, they're astringent herbs, although they also work on the gut uh, for co con co constipation, uh, so rhubarb root particularly is great, 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 great for that. Um, to the right there is actually bistel, which is lovely as a wild, wild food actually. Um, and then in the middle there uh, is red leg. And then uh, so sorrel is quite nice as a wild food. It's got a quite kind of nice kind of sour taste to it. Um, and it's also used in the Hoxi formula for cancer with burdock um, and a couple of other herbs I can't quite think at the moment. Um, so yeah, a few other families to look out for, of course, is the legume family, the pea family. Um, there are lots of pea family herbs growing around. Not actually, I mean, there are loads of medicines there, so there's licorice and things like that, but not an awful lot of things that you'll find, find growing, growing wild. Um, but if you look in the top right, that flower is the is the kind of classic pea family flower with the kind of keel in the middle and the wings. Um, so then there's the comfrey and the borage family. Uh, so there is the borage star, 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 star flower. Um, uh, yeah, I perhaps haven't got much time to say anything. Uh, then we've got the buttercup family generally toxic so you want to take care there. Uh, the bedstraw family is goosefoots, no I mean uh, uh, go goosegrass, um, have a nice effect on the blood actually they're quite good for kind of l l lowering the viscosity of the blood um, and the heath family is heather, bilberries of course, blue, 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 blueberries um, and uh, late, uh, yeah, that's, that, that's uh, probably prob probably it. I could kind of go on at length. Um, and then, yeah, a few other things that you're going to see. So, of course, nettle is an amazing wild food medicine and 
uh, yeah, I could do a whole talk perhaps on it. Uh, wild garlic, perhaps we, we, we all know. Um, fumitory is a nice herb for, for the liver and you see it around a lot. Primroses, you, you, you can use them for kind of sleep. Um, uh, willow herbs used to be known as the gentleman's herb. Um, it's a very good herb for pro pro prostate. Uh, St. John's were, of course, a very good herb for kind of sad. So when you're being brought down in the winter and it's also a very, very good herb for pain as well. Um, and of course, chickweed is an amazing herb as a sa salad. Um, it's meant to act on the thyroid as well, actually. Um, and then elder and cramp bark are in the same family. Um, and um, uh, cramp bark's a lovely herb for tension uh, and cramp, of course. And elder, of course, we use for our colds and flus and things like that. So um, yeah, I think that's yeah, thank you so much. Kind, kind of me, yeah. Thank you, Chris. Thank you very much.